Good news everyone, this is Mr. Malt, and in this podcast I'm going to show you how to take a set of data and linearize it. And the whole point of linearizing a set of data is we're trying to get uh, an equation and when we're dealing with straight lines it's really easy to look at an equation and come up with an equation, uh, look at, at a graph and come up with an equation. Uh, and so we love straight lines, we love things that are linear, and so linearization is a way to test if your data truly is a certain type of variation. So for example, if I graph, uh, and I notice something looks inverse, if I graph y versus 1 over x, uh, and I make a test plot and I graph, um, graph those quantities, what will happen is you'll get a straight line. And once you have a straight line, it's really easy to make an equation because everybody knows how to do y equals mx plus b. A parabolic variation that is of the uh, side opening variety um, if it truly is parabolic, then if we graph y versus x squared, we should get a straight line. And then lastly, if there's a, uh, a square root type function, a way we can linearize one of those graphs is we can plot y squared versus x, and when we do that, it will give us a straight line. So let me show you an example of uh, linearizing a graph, and once you see how easy it is, what this is going to do is it's going to give you another tool in your toolbox to find an appropriate equation that models a set of data quickly and effectively. So let's go ahead and go to uh, Excel and what I've graphed for you here is this is from that uh, packet on experimental design. And in this experiment the length of a pendulum was changed and the period was measured to see how it was affected. Now for some reason uh, when you plug into Excel the point zero zero onto a graph, um, Excel doesn't like working with numbers raised to the uh, zero raised to some power or negative numbers raised to some power and so if you put in a zero you will find Excel will not uh, calculate a trend line so what I have to do is I have to actually select the data that is everything but zero and we could go and insert uh, insert a scatter plot and you're seeing what I did in order to see that graph that you have shown I had to go down and linear wasn't a very good fit um, and so I went and I found one and when I got to power you'll notice that my power is about to the 0.5 so this is roughly a uh, one half power so this would be a square root variation so I'm, I'm noticing the square root variation uh, this up opening parabola and so what I want to do is I want to test and come up with an equation um, that I can really rely on. Uh, you know this in Excel we have these you know, 0 0.507, it's close to, but it's not quite uh, as easy to deal with. So what we can do is we can take our original data and I'm going to go back to that handout and if it really is a square root variation, so it looks like that bottom one, um, I'm going to graph y squared versus x. So I'm going to go back to Excel. Um, You'll notice that when I write uh, into Excel, you must put the independent variable first. And it, remember dry mix, the independent variable goes with the x. And then second is the dependent variable, and that is going to be what was plotted on the y-axis. So I put those two things up there for a reference point. Because what we're going to have to do is plot, as we said, y squared versus x. So I'm going to take my column that was my y, and I'm going to select that data and I'm going to make a new one over here and I'm going to call this um, y squared versus x. Now in a graph, remember it's always the y versus the x. So now I want to graph y squared versus x. Um, and so remember x was the independent variable and it was written first uh, and so I need to put x as written first again. So I'm going to copy And this is going to be my x column, y squared versus x. And I'm going to make a y squared column. I'm just doing this for myself. Um, my y squared column is going to be here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and press an equal sign. And I'm going to click on my y value. And I'm going to press shift raised to the second power. Press enter. And so what it does now is it's taking that cell y and squaring it. So I'm going to drag this down and it's going to copy that equation to every single one. So now what I have in this data table is 
my x um, or my length and then I have my y squared all I did was I took my y column and I did a little manipulation and so now I have these two columns here now remember we're trying to plot y squared versus x okay this is the dependent variable and this is the independent variable so you'll notice that the independent variable or my x had to go first and then my y squared which is my dependent variable which goes on the y axis is going second and so once I have this y, y squared versus x situation um, we're gonna go ahead and graph this and if it truly is inverse we should see a linear graph and there we go so I can do now is I can go ahead and uh, I'm gonna add a trend line uh, we're gonna go ahead and give this a little title here um, this was y squared versus x so we had uh, period squared versus uh, length just so I can have a reference point and there's my equation 0.999 was the r squared so what I'm going to do now um, also while I'm here I'm noticing that there there is a y-intercept value um, but it is very small 0 0.01 if I were to take 0 0.01 and divide that by um, my highest um, value in the y uh, axes which is 3.24 you're gonna find that that's much less than 5% so we're gonna assume that, that 0 0.0188 is essentially negligible the y-intercept really should be 0 so we're looking at y is equal to 0 0.041x so what we can do is the last step is to take that equation uh, and figure out what it what it was talking about um, and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and add some chart elements on here um, so that we can see exactly what's going on here uh, and so this is going to be period squared and if I take a period squared my units is going to be second squared and then in my x-axis is going to be my length and my units would be uh, centimeters for my length all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, the last step now that I have my uh, test plot, is we're going to come up with an equation. I'm going to go ahead and paste this over here. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and come up with an equation. So what did Y stand for for this graph? Well, after my linearization, my Y stood for period squared. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on here. is equal to um, my slope was 0 0.041 um, because it was a straight line I can use my rise over my run so I look at my rise unit and my run unit and the numbers attached to that uh, slope are going to be seconds squared was my rise and centimeters was my run so there's my rise over run and then we said that the um, oh we have to put X on there Thanks. So there we have it. Um, linear equation, um, period squared is equal to, there's my slope, um, times my length. And what's kind of cool uh, is that once you have this equation, you've done two things. You've confirmed that this is in fact um, an inverse or a square root variation, excuse me, not inverse. You've confirmed that this is a inverse variation, and you also have Admit, uh, you now have an equation that relates period and length uh, that you can trust and so if we wanted to we could figure out what the period was okay? if we wanted to find just the period we could go further and take the square root of both sides uh, and you would find that the period itself would be equal to we could square root that term some new value um, and you would have units of seconds over the square root of centimeters you know, times the square root of your length. Okay. Kind of weird units, but you could go back and figure out exactly, and then there'd be some number here, exactly um, an equation for relating period and length. In fact, looking back at what we just had done, let's confirm that that is indeed the right equation. If I take the square root of 0 0.041, 
it's important to note that the equation for both graphs, whether they be the linearized graph or the original one, is identical. Those uh, equations are identical. And so the reason we do the manipulation of the independent variable is to get the equation into a standard form uh, so that we can actually figure out what the equation is. And so if I start with that first equation before I did all that square root stuff and I tried to work backwards to find just what period was, and I go back and compare that equation to my original equation, uh, over here, you would find that they're the exact same thing. The square root of point, uh, 0.41 is 0.1955, and then your length is the square root, um, and then we already figured out our units for that. Uh, and so when I go backwards, and I were, were to, to work back to that point here, uh, 0 0.1955, you would find that I could plug in a length, it would get square rooted, I'd have square root centimeters, they would cancel, and you would be able to get a period in seconds. And so either this equation here, before I did the square root, let me erase that. Okay. Either that equation there, or the other one there, they're the exact same equation, we just arrived at them at two different ways. Okay, uh, I hope that this has been helpful. This is linearization in a nutshell, uh, and have a w wonderful weekend.